Hey everybody, happy Monday. I uh, hope you all enjoyed the Super Bowl. Uh, as expected, it was a pretty good game. And it looks like the Chiefs were just doing exactly what they were doing in the uh, playoffs, you know. Uh, trailing and then all of a sudden out of nowhere come back and just destroy whoever they were playing, you know. Um, I didn't win my big pool. Uh, I, I came up a couple of yards short of the total yardage, which is uh, the size of the tiebreaker. But what are you going to do? You know, that's just how it goes. Um, I did lose $50 to Quinn, my mailman, right? But then I won $20 from Larry. So I lost 30 bucks. No big deal. Uh, it was fun to watch. Um, I thought the uh, Jennifer Lopez Shakira thing sucked. The best one I've ever seen was probably the uh, Lady Gaga one. That was probably the best halftime show. Uh, Demi Lovato did pretty well on the national anthem too. She's gotten kind of pudgy, huh? Uh, anyway, uh, I thought it was pretty funny how President Trump uh, congratulated the great state of Kansas. Uh, anyway, so my next project today is, that's right, we're gonna revisit my MTD uh, Cub Cadet. It's really an MTD with a Cub Cadet hood and a Cub Cadet seat. Um, as you all know, I did a stupid and actually paid 40 bucks for this thing, right? Uh, got the engine running, as you know, from a past episode. And then the next day, it just blew up. Connecting rod right out of the block. Sometimes you just can't figure it out, you know what I mean? Uh, my friend Larry had the same problem. He had gotten an engine running perfectly. Next day, just blew up. Same thing happened. No rhyme or reason as to why the connecting rod just came flying out, you know? Anyway, as you also know, I did a recent trade with my friend Nick from uh, Lindenhurst. He goes by Five Speed Ash. Uh, I gave him like uh, seven things, and he gave me a 13 point, uh, a 13 horsepower uh, flathead Briggs engine. So it, that engine's untested, because he doesn't have a way for the, uh, for himself to, to test engines like that, so, uh, I mean, I, I think it'll, it'll be all right, you know, it, the connecting rod is connected to the piston and that's all that we care about, you know. So I'm going to push this into the garage, and uh, as you know that I was on uh, a lot of guard, uh, lawn tractors recently, I did a um, 10 episode thing on that timing thing, then I had a... 14 episode uh, thing on the um, LT1000, engine rebuild, repower, repurpose. Then I went to a generator, then I went to a snowblower, so it's now time to go back to a lawn tractor again. So I'm gonna push this into the garage and we're gonna mount uh, that 13 horsepower engine. Remember the mower deck thing is also strange too. I think I could probably fix that problem by just getting a, a longer belt, you know.
射。Off pretty easily like that. Um, the engine that I have already has a built-in muffler on it, so I think to uh, make things easier, I'm going to remove that muffler. It appears that the muffler has been rigged, obviously, what with this hose clamp here and this extra piece here. Nothing would stop. This is kind of like a uh, Franken mower, you know? There's another thing on the very bottom there. You can't see. Go. Let's grab that engine. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna get the engine. I have it on my stand. Man, it's pretty heavy. It's only thirteen. So after looking at this engine for a little bit, right, um, that, I have some concerns. First of all, the entire engine is completely coated with thick layers of oil. I mean, that kind of is a sign, right, that the sump gasket must be leaking all around because there's literally oil encased completely around the entire block. I mean, how do you, how do you get it like that, you know, without catastrophic um, leaks in the sump gasket, you know? So I almost question whether or not I should go through the trouble of mounting this on here without actually trying to see. But for you to test it to see if it leaks, you're gonna have to mount mount at least two screws on here to keep it steady, otherwise it will come flying off, you know, from the vibration. Um, also, as you see, there's some very stiff fuel lines that are leading to the side over here, right? And basically, we don't need it there. Also, um, coming out of the stator is one single red wire. I'm not used to seeing just one single red wire. I'm used to seeing one uh, red and one white wire, you know what I mean? And that's a dual, dual circuit stator. Um, Kind of wondering what a single wire coming out of the stator goes to you know i i don't think i've ever had that you know unless it's one of those half stators you know have you seen those half stators and uh also i can't find the magneto kill wire so i think no matter what we got to remove this uh engine cover to, to see where what kind of stator it is right so that i can make the right connections and what kind and where is the uh, magneto kill wire you know i need and if there isn't one on there i need to attach one on there otherwise you, you won't be able to shut off the engine you know so i'm going to take that cover off now because i haven't mounted the engine on yet right it's going to be easy to remove these 3 8 bolts out of out of here to get the engine cover off cuz i could just turn it like that Remove the 
dipstick. A 14 carat dipstick! Might as well take this off too so I can at least inspect the, the starter gears, you know? It's the quarter inch screws for the starter gear cover. Uh huh. So it's a plastic gear, right? Ring gear, which means this is the bolted on aluminum uh, flywheel teeth or gear. Just one quarter screw that holds the dipstick on. You can just remove the dipstick off completely, and as you can see, there's some oil in it, but not a lot. It's really dirty. All right, so uh, let's take this cover off and see what's underneath. Rat's nest or no rat's nest? I say no. Huh? Yeah, that's right. There is no rat's nest. Uh, just for the record, fellas, this is a 28M707. 13 horsepower. I see gold. Industrial commercial gold. Flathead. Not overhead valve, otherwise you'd see the uh, valve cover. This uh, hose is very stiff. I wanna, I wanna take it out. I don't, I don't it because uh, it's pointed in the wrong direction. Been done though. All right, so uh, as we're looking here, Magneto looks good. I don't really feel any compression though. Is this compression now? Yes. Some compression. So I'm glad I took this off. You know why? Because, oh, here it is. Check it out. There be the uh, mag magneto kill wire. It's leading to the left side. Oh, and it's attached to the throttle over here. It's the really old style. I know you can't see it, but uh, the magneto kill wire runs all the way through here and attaches to the throttle plate over here so that once you uh, once you pull the throttle back the, uh, to almost uh, idle, but beyond idle, right? You touch contacts there and it kills the engine that way, not necessarily from a key, which uh, I, may, I may try to um, mess with that and take that wire off and connect it to the ignition switch where you can shut it off through your uh, key and not, not so much the um, throttle. Remove this fuel line. So stiff and rigid, you don't want it anyway. So now, uh, now that I see the engine is clean, uh, everything looks like it's in order. I'm going to replace this uh, cover back on again. Since it was so easy to take off. You know what I mean? Burn. As long as I'm here, I might as well cleaned up this area a little bit, you know, including the uh, dipstick reservoir area. Shit. Remind me to put Earl in here, fellas.
this is actually relatively clean. You know, the, these parts go for a lot of money too on eBay. Um, 15, 20 bucks. This little plastic thing. All right, ridiculous. Well, by the way, so I was looking through the inventory of parts on my opposed twin. And while I was going to start my opposed twin thing, uh, I'm actually missing more parts than I thought. So I'm missing the engine cover, the side head cylinder head tins, the bottom cylinder head tins, oil slinger. I forgot, I don't have a starter for an opposed twin. That's like $35, $40, right? And also a camshaft. I don't have a camshaft. So I need a camshaft, cover, tins, starter, oil slinger. That's a lot right there, you know? So, I don't know. I don't think I'll be doing it anytime soon. Because <laughs> it's going to cost a lot of money. I mean, whether I get some from a subscriber, maybe, if you guys have that stuff laying around, you want to donate it to the cause, that's fantastic. But uh, I'm not going to go out and spend like 100 hundred. 100 bucks on that, those parts may end up be $150 in parts for an engine that I don't know may or may not run. You know what I'm saying? Um, while I have had good good success with opposed twins, you know, you just never know. And so, um, I mean, it's not like I have a shortage of tractors, for goodness sakes, you know? I've got too many, as a matter of fact. I decided to lift up the engine so I can find some mounting bolts that would fit the hole. And while I have it there, I'm going to just scrape off some of this uh, dried up Earl. I mean, it's just absolutely disgusting. Look at that. Ugh. It's a lot of evidence of Earl at the oil seal here, you know? So I'm thinking maybe the oil seal, the crankshaft seal is bad. You know? Even if I get this thing running right, this thing will drip oil like mother. Uh, so if I do find the uh, engine mounting bolts, I'm not going to torque them down. I'm just going to put them on so it won't fall off, you know, because I have a feeling I'm going to have to disconnect all this stuff. Flip it upside down, take the sump cover off, and replace the gaskets or the oil seal. You know, it just seems like I have to do that. Uh, fortunately, um, the seals for this is not very expensive. Uh, there's a kit that comes with all the gaskets. Um, head gasket, sump gasket, uh, oil crankshaft seals, they all come together and it's only like $10.50, $11 for the whole kit. I think that, actually that's for the overhead valve kind, you know, I bought a few of those. I don't know about the flatheads, but I can't imagine it's, you know, way too much money, you know, to get that going. But look at how much oil is just encased in here, just a lot. You know what I mean? so that worries me about the condition of the engine. Maybe the person that had it before a five-speed dash was just a complete slob and didn't care. You know, if uh, he was checking the oil and left the drain plug out or something like that, just kept on letting it run and never wiped it up and over the years it just did this. Or we've got seals and gaskets that are just blown, you know. You know, you never know. But anyway, I'm going to find some bolts to mount this engine. Found some engine mounting bolts for this. Let's get. Remind me to tighten that. only two holes I could fit. Four holes, I mean. Only fit in four holes. And that is the only way to fit. Even distance between the holes. Is it centered in the hole? By the feel of your hands? Yes. Let's see if I can get this in with my impact driver. You're not going to believe it, but I, I was able to impact those in, that entire two sides in there just with an impact. I could feel it. There's a lot of room down here. Got my hand.
hands turned in, uh, some of the bolts hand tightened. Now I just got four mounting bolts in there with my impact. That's amazing. I don't think I've ever done it that way before. So that's awesome. Now we're going to attach the starter starter cable to the uh, starter. It's right here. Bolt's actually right on there. Makes it convenient. Starter is on there nicely. Technically, this starter wire should be behind the dipstick. Holds it in place. Put the nut on. It's easier if your nut has a washer on it so that it tries not to turn the inner one while you're trying to tighten the outer one. I have two here to hold it in place. Starter is now connected. Awesome. Got the throttle cable all hooked up here. Check it out. Pushes the choke. Pushes the choke. Just using some uh, penetrating oil here to clean this stuff up, be a little bit more lubricated. Much smoother, see? I'm going to attach the fuel line now. This fuel line is gravity fed. We know that uh, we have a clean fuel, fuel tank. I'm a little worried about the fact that the fuel tank is lower than the carburetor itself. See what I'm saying? I almost feel like I want the line to be a little bit more straight. See what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying, right? I feel the fuel line is too long. But we'll just have to uh, try it. Now this carburetor is probably filthy dirty, but let me connect the battery and we'll see if it at least cranks so we know that the starter works. Here we have a brand new battery that I got from uh, Walmart the other day. It was the only one left. The others were 300 and 350 CCAs, cold cranking apps, but I had to get what I could get. Happy to have this one. Where are those nuts? Batteries mounted, positive and negative. I don't know about you guys, but I'm always looking for um, the nut and bolt to get those terminals on there. I'm always looking for those uh, 716 things. I hate it. Okay, we got a battery in there. Um, engine's mounted. Got the throttle cable on there. There's no gas. Not even any oil, I don't think. Uh, but let's see if it at least cranks. Ooh! Nice strong crank, too. Let's check the Earl. Huh. Actually very clean. And it's uh, very little, too. It's, um, it's just it's just a little smidgen of it right there, but it's clear, you know. Um, it needs plenty, so I'm gonna put in one full quart of SAE 30. I put one full quart in there, and it's at the it's uh, a little past the ad line, so this is good. So let's we'll use this and try it. Okay, here we go. Got gas in it now. Just put some gas in there. Got Earl. Got spark. Oh, no, I don't know if I have spark. Let's put it to choke. So 
doesn't start. Let's take the air filter cover off and the air filter and shoot some primer in there just to see if we're getting any fuel. Oh, isn't that special? There's no air filter. So anything could fly in there and get clogged into the carburetor. Anything. I'm going to use some carb cleaner. This is uh, multi-purpose parts cleaner and degreaser from my friends over at Lucas Oil. I'm just going to spray a little bit in here. You know what? I'm going to take it off choke. Now it's open. Shooting it all the way through. Putting the choke back on. Nice! Nice! So you know what this means? The carburetor's dirty! And of course we know the carburetor's dirty because it starts with carb cleaner but it doesn't start regularly which means that fuel is probably not getting into the carburetor and I wouldn't be surprised because if there's no air cleaner right then anything could have flown in there I've removed the uh, two seven sixteenths bolts that hold the air filter cover as well as clamped off the fuel line here there's another five sixteenths that go over here Oh my god! That's dirty. Filthy. You're filthy. <laughs> You're filthy. <laughs> Alright, calm down. Alright, calm down. Five sixteen studs. Gotta loosen them up. Take these studs out. That's why I don't like to use gloves. You end up getting your hands dirty no matter what. You can't feel anything with gloves. Just clumsy. It takes four times as long to do what you gotta do. You know what I mean? Just get your bare hands in there. Boom. Pull the choke linkage out. Small thin wire for the tension of your throttle. Man, he's gonna break it. Come out. This is a choke cable, which I'm going to remove because it's getting in my face every time, you know. This, uh, the choke cable is for a, um, a post twin or something, you know. Anyway, there be the carburetor. Seems clean enough, but you never know. I'm going to have to take the bowl off. What kind of bowl is this? Is that 7 16 also? Yes, it is. Ooh, that was easy. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Oh, uh, that's not a good sign. It's so dry. Oh my God. Drier than the Nevada desert. No fuel was going in because you know why? It's seized. Look at that. Ready? I'm going to take this pin out. I'm not going to. I'm going to. Uh-huh. 
the uh, the needle is seized, rusted seized, in the shaft where the fuel comes in. You see, I, I removed the pin, and it still won't come out. I'm not going to force it. I'm going to take a small screwdriver. Henry, why are you talking like a British fella? I don't know. Just uh, makes the uh, conversation interesting, I guess. Oh, I guess so. Henry, you're going to break it. Mm, I might break it. Henry, why don't you do some penetrating oil on there? Because this is plastic, not metal. Couldn't hurt. Are you an expert now? Yeah, you're going to break it. Alright. Stop doing it then. Alright, you know what? I can, I can see the top of a the thing there. I'm not touching any plastic. I'm just going to bang it out. No, Henry, don't do it. You're going to break something. No, don't do it. Stop yourself. It didn't work. Break the needle, Henry. You're going to break the needle. Ah. Uh, uh, not only did I break the needle, but I also broke the float. You see, Henry, I told you, shut up! Ah, uh, this, this carburetor's dunsky anyway. All right, no way that needle's coming out properly. You know what I'm saying? Even from banging, it's stuck in there, man. Look at that, see? I just pulled it off, it's seized in there, man. This carburetor is Dunsky. You're Dunsky, Henry. So I found the identical carburetor in my box of parts, right? Uh, but um, you could tell because it has one of these crazy gaskets, you know? It's a Walboro. Four niner niner six. They're exactly the same. Only this one here has the needle that I broke, but it's seized in there. Can't even get it out, right? This one is dirty and corroded, however. The needle is not seized. It actually moves freely, but it is dirty. It has a lot of corrosion. Plus, this gasket, it's Dunsky. Plus, this bowl is just as dirty as this bowl. They're both terrible bowls. Um, this one that I just got came with a fuel solenoid with a valve on it. Well, I don't want that. So I'm going to take, take the uh, nut, you're a nut, this nut that came with the first one, put that nut in, but I do have to clean this one, and I have to use this gasket. So I'm going to take this gasket off and put it on this one, clean this one, and put that bowl nut onto that bowl after I clean it. That'll be the plan. I could use a uh, copied Nikki, right? Ooh, that came off very easily. I could use the copied Nikki. Copied Nikki sometimes doesn't work with uh, 13 or so horsepower engines. Let's clean this all up, get that together. Clean the bowl like this. This always works.
pretty cool, huh? Let that take 30 seconds. Very cool. It's gonna take a while for me to clean this damn thing. Yo, so I basically built one carburetor out of two yucky ones, right? One of them, of course, the original was broken. So I took a lot of time, man. It probably took me half an hour or something like that just to grind all the corrosion out of there, you know, get everything together. I had to take off the old gasket uh, from the intake manifold to the carburetor because it was just like solid on there, you know what I mean? So then I took the other one out, I put it on back on there. I used the bowl from the first one. I used the um, gasket from the other one, you know, and I cleaned everything out, blew all the holes and stuff like that, and uh, uh, attached the fuel line back on here, the carburetor's back on here with throttle linkage as well as the... Uh, <clears throat> choke cable. I just connected it on there and it's not leaking. And this actually could be pushed in more, but I'll mess with that later, you know, but it's not leaking, which is good, good news. And so we're just going to give it a try here and see what happens. <laughs> Pretty good, man. Pretty good. I'm pretty impressed.
<laughs> I uh, forgot. Remember, we never connected the uh, magneto kill wire, so I have to do that now. Good man. Sounds good. So Quinn the mailman came. I didn't know he was working today, but a bet's a bet. I lost it. So here you go, Quinn. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it, it could be worse. I could have actually told you I predict the score to be thirty to twenty. Oh. <laughs> bet's a bet. I'm just getting visits from all kinds of people today. That's uh, Jason from Pate's Performance in Mandingo. I think he just got it back from some tuning. Nice and easy. And look who we found. Look at that. It's Jason <laughs> from Pate's Performance. What's going on, bro? What's happening? All right. What kind of crazy stuff have you brought me today? All right. I already explained to you. I'll see you guys in a little bit. Holy cow, he's doing his video. <laughs> Alright, so uh, Jason's here. He came to see me. He says, hey, Henry, you want some content? And I'm, think <laughs> I'm thinking to myself, I've got a lot of content already, but if you're going to throw it out, lay it on me, brother. So I got a couple good things for him. Obviously, you guys know I spent a good portion of my week working on Mandingo. And uh, I didn't get everything done, but... Have less time for content to project, so just gonna pass it along. And uh, Henry was painting a snowblower yesterday, so I know he's short on content. <laughs> <laughs> or I don't want, or I don't want to mess with uh, with tractors anymore. Yes, you know yes, what I mean? yes. All right, so this will look for code. This is the John Deere JS. Holy cow! Are you giving me the JS63, bro? Yes. yes. What are you crazy? Why? <laughs> One, two, three. Yep. Why is that? It's a good machine, man. It is a good machine. So I got it running, because remember you gave me the motor. I actually started to V-log on it, and then I got sidetracked. So I'm going to give you your engine back. I got it running. Just uh, adjust the governor on it, and uh, clean it up, and you're good to go. I, I bought a new uh, cable and a bale for it, but it was used. So the cable, I think, is actually stretched. So I was thinking about doing the switch or just wrapping the cable around and just giving it extra tension. So I know the cable needs some work. Um, yeah, and just adjust the carburetor, and that's Are it. You sure, it. man? 110%. You'll get 150 for this minimal. More than that. This is 200 plus. It's a deer. It's John Deere Green. People yeah. go crazy. I just sold it to my mailman's cousin for 150 and only because he was his cousin. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. It was just some schmo on the street. It'd be like 175 200 easy. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, I bought a bale cable for it. I bought a primer bulb because I didn't know you were going to give me the engine, which I'm grateful for. I'll get the back. That's buried in my garage. I got to I gotta earth that out. So you can take that. A JS63. JS Chosante. <laughs> that, that's Chinese, you know. So this is a home light. Wow. And you know what? It looks like it's in good shape, too. Yep. So it needs a carburetor. The person actually dropped this off to me in pieces in a box, and I started putting it together, and I'm like, wait a minute, it's not worth it. So I told the guy, come pick it up, and obviously I'm still with it. So it's been a certain time. It's hard to pass it on. I have the gas tank for it. Um, I'll give you the gas tank. That's good to go. Mm, it's all in pieces. <laughs> <laughs> um, you said the carburetor? Did I need a carburetor? Yeah, 110. Yeah, this thing was like a rock underneath. And then I'll yeah, get and all that stuff. Man, yeah. I've never even seen a carburetor like that before. Yeah, I think they're like less than 20 bucks. But then I'm like, wait a minute. It's not worth it for me to assemble it. I mean, I put it... A good portion back it, it, it may not be worth it for me to put it back. <laughs> hey, listen, you can do it if you want. Oh, I remember. This is the one I, I remember was telling you about. I remember it. One, two, three. Yeah, one, two, three. Yeah, I remember this. I, when I first started, actually, fellas, um, that's what I was doing. I was doing a lot of those. This is the uh, Lawn Boy. Well, it's a Tecumseh on here. Oh, God, I hate the Tecumsehs, man. Don't you guys hate the Tecumsehs? I hate it. So I hate this, it. This was dropped off to me by repair. He's actually a very good customer of mine. 
But I got him on camera. He touched the spikes on my dually and broke them. Uh, I saw, yeah. And he didn't want to fess up to it. So I said, pick up your lawnmower, have a nice day. And obviously, it's still here. He never so, came to pick it up, so... It's, 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 gotta go. I don't want no bad juju, you know? Man, why don't you just, like, try to fix it and sell it, bro? No bad juju, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, another one of these. Oh, no. I, I have to shoot for this. I just barely got rid of my juju. Edgers! Power washers. Oh no. These are really cool. You know what? I Well, listen, man. Why don't you do what I do, right? And just put them all together in one batch. Take a picture and say, who wants it? <laughs> Give me $10, $20, whatever. But, why don't you do that? You're priceless to me. <laughs> oh, that. You can't tell. So, this was dropped off by a customer of mine. He just gave it to me because I was very good to him. Pull cord broke off. Uh -huh. So, obviously, I think it's been sitting with gas in it. So, uh -huh. according to him, just clean out the carburetor, put a hose on it, and this will be good to go. Right, me. That's a Honda engine, yeah? Yes, a very good Honda engine. You got that? You got it? Yeah. This is my old pressure wash. This is the one I, I put a brand new. I got this from my scrap guy for a dollar. A dollar? Yep. <laughs> and it needed a pump. And the pump was 180 bucks. And I actually paid for a brand new pump. And this thing served me really, really well. Yeah. But the plastic fitting that you hook up your garden hose to broke. And it's a funky fitting. This looks just like that one, bro. Not that one's the newer version. So, I tried going to the hardware store. They said no. Went to the plumbing supply store. They said no. I said, listen, man, I got to clean and flip and fix equipment. I don't got time to screw around. So that's when I went out. And if you guys remember on my channel, I went and I bought the Greenworks um, Pro 2300 PSI pressure washer. This is 2400. I don't miss the 1000 PSI. You never heard this press, that pressure washer serves me well. I'm never going back to gas. So, um, I'll, I'll, uh, if Henry wants a nice quality pressure washer, by all means, fix it, save it, flip it, do whatever you want. Do whatever I want with it. Yes. Right? What did you do? I gave you the freight in, and then you traded it to 5 speed. Yes, do whatever you want. But, I but felt bad about it why? for a second. No. So then, that's why I text messaged you and says, hey, Jason. Is it okay if I do that? Are you cool with that? Because I want to ask you first before I do no. it. And he's like, I don't care. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> so that's what I said. I said I started to vlog it, and I ran into an issue. So I went to go on Google, and the first top tier searches is Henry Moe's a blower. <laughs> he had a video series on it. It's got thousands of views. And I said, you know what? I don't want to compete. I'll let Henry continue to be the authority on that freedom backpack post. If anybody has an issue... They go right to Henry Moe's and Blowers. You know what? Friends like this, man, <laughs> hard to come by. Really. Good-hearted guy, man, this guy. Nice hat, by the way. Thank you. Thank you for the excellent. So, as you guys, some of you guys may know, if you guys join my channel or whatever, it did a lot of work to the truck, and uh, Henry definitely hooked me up and helped me out with some uh, Lucas Oil products, okay? Um, it did a ton of work, and one of the things I did is a custom transmission cooling system on it. And uh, I did an electric cooler fan, relocated everything under the back, spin on filter. I took my transmission from 6 quarts to 10 quarts. And Henry gave me Lucas semi synthetic transmission fluid. So, how many quarts did you end up putting in there? Actually, I put in all nine. Wow. I want to see if I can get another quart or two. Wow. Because I went to go order from the parcel. They didn't have any. No kidding. So if you have them, great. If not, then I'll, I'll just order them all. No, time. I've got some more, bro. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Shoot, I don't need ATF. I don't really need automatic transmission fluid. I just use it to wipe down my, my equipment. But obviously, that's semi-synthetic, so I don't think it has the same kind of uh, shining qualities as regular ATF. ATF. Alcohol, tobacco, and... Firearms. So, I've been uh, bullshitting with Jason for the past hour or so. Sorry, it's always a good time. <laughs> <laughs> Just moved all my crap that he brought me from the front to the back because the wife was on the way home, you know. 
uh, in the interim while my battery was charging, I connected the stator wire and I tested it. It is charging at 12.75 to 12.8, so it's charging. I kind of had to figure it out, remember, because I didn't, I wasn't really sure about why the stator only had one wire sticking out because I'm always used to two wires, you know. So when I take this one red wire, this the single stator wire, I knew it was because it has a diode on it. Uh, the diode is to prevent current from going back to the stator and frying the stator. And I basically connected it to um, the wire that it that was supposed to go to the fuel solenoid on the other side. Because I text tested it with a multimeter and it was just a switched positive ground, right? Uh, positive uh, 12 volts. So I uh, connected it. It works great. It charges the battery. Awesome, right? Uh, at the at, Now I have to connect the lights which I don't even know if it has a wiring harness in there. I, I think it does, but I need to get light bulbs, which I have, and uh, I'll get the lights worked out. But this engine starts up. It runs great at high throttle, runs great at low throttle. It charges the battery, and uh, we, I, swapped out that, I swapped out that carburetor, and it runs great. And I'll show you right now it runs great. One stop. Oh, this One, is the harness on here. It even idles great, so I'm very happy about that, right? Now, when I tried the PTO, when the engine is running now, oh, I, I forgot to tell you, I spent the dickens of a time getting the pulley on there, because remember the pulley on the MTDs? There's a little bit of a spacer flange that's supposed to be on the top, right? So that gives you like a half inch of space between the bottom of the sump where the crank uh, shaft is, right, to the top of the pulley, the double stack pulley. I was missing that piece, so I had to go search in my shed and look for that damn piece. I knew I had it somewhere, but I don't remember where I put it. So I, had to, I tore up the entire shed looking for it. Finally, I found it. I got the double stack pulley on there with the spacer in there, so everything is great now. But remember the complaint to this thing? The guy that had this before ran into some curb, whatever. It's got like two dents in the front of this uh, mower deck, and so when the engine is running, it still spins the blades a little bit. When you engage the PTO, it spins it really fast and it runs great the way it is. But when you take it off the PTO, it still turns the blades a little bit. So what I'm going to try to do after I, you know, start winding down on this project is to lower the mower deck and take the mower deck belt off and go in the back and see if I can find a mower deck belt that's just like a half inch or an inch longer, which will prevent the blades from moving when the engine's running and that it will only run with um, the PTO. I'm gonna start it up one more time and engage the PTO for you guys. Jason, watch your legs, make sure yeah. you don't get them cut off, right? <laughs> that wouldn't be fun. How that works is that uh, even though the engine is on right the blades are kind of moving a little bit but then once you engage it to the next level that's that's what engages the PTO and then that's where the blades go full full speed you know so it kind of works but it, it still does kind of rub on the thing so I'll, I'll have to figure that out in the next episode but uh, thanks a lot for joining me today I'm glad that uh, we made some progress on this you know that MTD slash cup cadet it's been a pain in my side. I mean, I've already had previous four or five episodes to it. So, so we're repowering it again with the uh, five-speed Ash's engine. Thank you very much, Nick, from Linden Hurst, five-speed Ash. The trade that I did with him worked out great for me because this uh, flathead 13-horsepower Briggs and Stratton engine runs just fine, you know. All it needed was a carb clean. But uh, come and join me on the next episode where we try to work out the mower deck and clean it up a little bit, get the lights working on the hood 
and uh, maybe doing some painting, you know? Oh, and I need to swap out some tires, too, because these tires are bald, you know what I mean? That one has a flat. So I'm going to go and get, like, uh, you know, that, that yard machines that I have from uh, in the back? It's got no engine, no deck, no seat, right? But it's got four good wheels. It's got four good rear wheels, got four, uh, two good front wheels, right? And they don't leak. And, uh, well, honestly, I don't really know what I'm going to do with that, so I might as well steal the wheels from it. Remember, MTD wheels only fit on MTD products. A Craftsman or a Murray lawn tractor, their wheels are not interchangeable with MTD. The front hubs are much thinner. You won't be able to fit MTD wheels on a Craftsman or a Craftsman on an MTD. You can only use MTD wheels on a Troy Built, a Cub Cadet, an MTD Yard Machines, uh, Yard Works. Uh, that, that's about it, I think. But uh, anyway, that's just some information there. So, like I said, I do have a Yard Machines tractor. No deck, no engine, no seat. It's got four good wheels. I need four good wheels. This is an MTD. It should fit. So I'm going to try that on my next episode. I'll see you guys next time on Mowers and Bowers. Hey guys, support my channel by a sticker. Also, follow me on Instagram at Mowers Blowers. Check out my website, MowersBlowers.com.